All right, how's it going, y'all? So today we're going to be going over what are the best places to start if you're looking at buying a Synology NAS for the first time. We're really going to be focusing on kind of starter NASs. I am going to go all the way up to an eight bay just to kind of cap it off and have that in there because there are a few people who have these massive RAID arrays already and are looking to get to a NAS. But really the primary focus of this is going to be people who are just realizing, hey, I need a NAS, I wanna get more storage, and I wanna get into Synology. We're really gonna start where kind of the best values are and some stuff to avoid. This right here is a Synology 923 Plus, and we're gonna kind of talk about it because there are a few different things you need to look at whenever you're getting a NAS. It's, there's a few key parameters that really can basically summarize any Synology NAS at least. The most important being number of bays. So this is a four bay and the way the naming convention works that nine is because it can actually get a five bay expansion. And so that's how you get the nine. And then the 23 means that it is a 23 model. It's kind of car year. It's just now November and they've already released 2024 models. So it is very much car year style. And the DS stands for disc station, which means it is a basically a desktop unit. And finally, the plus means, hey, it's a little bit better than standard ones. And for a lot of people, I do recommend the plus units for larger ones. Though, honestly, there's a lot of value right now in the non-plus models that we're gonna talk about. So whenever you're getting a NAS, the single most important thing to look at is the number of A's. That's just where you need to start. And one thing you really want to do is you really should not get a four bay NAS and put four four terabyte hard drives in there because you need 12 terabytes of space today. That's a common thing that people do. And it means that in a year or so, when you realize, wow, I've got all this space, I'm using it more, you're now going to run out and have no real option to upgrade. Instead, what I would really recommend doing is buy a four bay NAS. If you've got the budget for it, I think a four bay is a really great place to start. Buy a four bay NAS and put two 16 terabyte hard drives in there. What that really gets you is the ability to expand. Because when you're talking about RAID, especially RAID with redundancy, with smaller models, basically always just take one drive and that's used for space and parity. So if you start with that, you're gonna start with 16 terabytes of usable space. But if you start running out of space, you can just slot another 16 terabyte hard drive, boom, hit expand, and now you have 32 terabytes. Happens again, one more, and now you've got 48 terabytes really 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 useful thing to be able to do and personally i bought a two bay filled it up immediately and then i had to grow on it is something that a lot of people do and it's one of those things that really just if you buy a four bay and fill it with two 16 terabyte drives you will very much extend out your investment and it just has a much more flexible solution so for people who are just starting out number of bays by far the most important thing to look at and really kind of go off of that and we're going to talk about it here and then there's a couple of other things I do want to touch on. And here it's gonna be BTRFS. So I'm gonna recommend a Synology with BTRFS for every single person for starting. And every one of these that I'm gonna recommend on this list has BTRFS except for one of them, which it's just because of the price point, it's hard to justify not getting that for people who are really looking at a low price point model. The next thing to look at is the amount of RAM one gig is going to be a bit slow. If you're just planning on using it purely as a place to dump your files, it'll be fine. But two to four gigs is really what I would say, especially if you wanna start using some of the apps is where, where you'd be at. But that is one of the things that nudges you up to that larger price points and things like that. And finally, the CPU. The CPU is important for if you've got Docker and some other support like that. But for people who are really just starting out, it is not too critical. And you really kinda of have to ask yourself, is this something that I'm gonna be using often? And what apps am I gonna be using? And we're really gonna be talking about that in this case. Finally, there are two additional things that really kind of set different NASs apart. One is the ability for M.2 NVMe SSDs. And you're gonna see this as a really key selling point, but for most starters who are really just kind of starting out and using it as a general file server, this is not something you really need to harp on and make sure you get, if you're already getting a NAS and it has that capability, go ahead and throw a cheap 500 gig SSD in there and make it a read only cache. But for most people who are just starting out, unless you know you're somebody who's tinkering, running Docker, all that kind of stuff, you probably don't need to really worry about that and spend the extra money to get a unit with it because quite frankly, it's not that critical for basic usage. 
And then lastly, something that is very critical for specific people is the ability to upgrade the networking. So right now, unfortunately, all Synologies come with a one gig connection on them, at least all the ones we're talking about now. And compared to something like USB 3, that's slow. Now, if you are just gonna be accessing this thing over Wi-Fi and dumping some photos to it, you're never gonna notice the difference. Don't worry about networking. But if you're somebody who's kind of a power user, you wanna start dumping movies and copying a bunch of files and you've got terabytes of data, really look and see if you're going to be able to have a wired network. If you are wired one gigabit, your max transfer speed will be about 120 megabytes per second, which is the speed of a slow external hard drive. So that's about what it is. Now, if you go to 10 gig and 2.5 gig, you can get much faster speeds depending on your number of hard drives in your array. Finally, for people who are kind of knowing they're going to tinker more and want to play around and really want to get into that home lab space, check out and make sure it's got the ability to run Container Manager and possibly virtual machines. For most people, you probably just need Container Manager. And now if you are going to be running virtual machines, really make sure you've got enough RAM for that because those are the one things that are a RAM hog. To be fair, Linux, you can have a very lightweight Linux distro that uses 500 megabytes of RAM and runs quite frankly fine. So that is going to be the key specs to look at. We're going to kind of go over each of these at these price points right now. And we're going to kind of start at the very cheapest one. And that right here is the DS120J. It is the only sub $100 unit. And if you are really trying to hit that price point, it's the only option. It is the only one that we're talking about here that has no BTRFS on it but it's just a single bay. And if you're just looking to get started and want to just do very, very, very basic things, it is hard to beat with this price point. It's also something that if you do upgrade to a larger unit later on, you can use it as a backup target, which is nice, but this is a very, very, very low cost unit and you only get one drive for that. So you won't be able to do any kind of redundancy, but for this price point, you're really not worried about that. You're just worried about having a central cloud. If you're trying to hit that price point, that's the only reason I would get it. Otherwise, I would really look to go into a larger unit. I would not recommend buying the DS124, quite frankly, because it is just one bay and is only $10 cheaper than the DS223J, which is basically the exact same system right here. This is at $190, the DS223J is $190, the DS124 is $180. I would really just go straight to the DS223J in that case. Even if you just stick one hard drive in there, they both have BTRFS and I think essentially the same CPU in them, but it's really one of those things that the extra bays are going to be so much better of an upgrade than anything else. So I would just straight up skip the 124 and go to the 223J just because you've got the extra bait, that's a huge upgrade for $10. So then moving on up the product tree, and the next one I would definitely skip is the $250 DS223. Quite frankly, I just don't see it as enough of an upgrade over the DS223J to, to justify a massive price increase for that. It's like 70 bucks more expensive, and it's just honestly not worth it because I think the only thing this gets you is an extra one gigabyte of RAM, which at this price level and at this amount of RAM, it's difference between one and two gigs is substantial, but it's just much harder to justify that price given how limited it is with the only the two bays. I would probably really try to push for the 423 just because if you're looking at this as a overall investment, the cost of your hard drives are very quickly going to be more expensive than the cost of this unit. And so having a much more flexible unit that you can add drives to later on with a four bay, I think is really valuable. Now, if you're somebody who knows you're never going to really be growing at all, then there's reason to have this. But otherwise, I would really look at running the DS423, though it does come in at 370, which is a substantial price hike. Now, we are talking about a four bay NAS, and so you're definitely going to be spending more on your hard drives for this than on your overall NAS itself, which is one of those things you need to keep in mind just because the NAS is $100 more expensive does not mean that that is going to be $100 cheaper if you buy the cheaper one, especially once you start including RAID math in there if you're going to be running a redundant RAID. In that same vein, we're going to be going over and we're going to be skipping over the 220 plus and the 224 plus unless you're really somebody who just needs the ability to upgrade your RAM. 
I would really recommend if you're if you're in that section, probably go the 723, but there's very few people who really are in this section right here. I would next up really look at the DS423 Plus, or if you are savvy and okay buying something used, look at the DS920 Plus from last generation because they're basically the same thing. Now the DS423 Plus is the first one here that I'm recommending that does have that upgradable RAM. Starts off with two gigs, which is a little limited, but it does have the ability to add another four gigs to it, which is going to be night and day for people who are running dock containers, tinkering and things like that. And so it's a solid unit for that. It does have the ability to also have NVMe drives, which is a nice to have, but not really something you should be looking at and buying especially at these levels, just because it's quite frankly, not that critical. And one other thing that this DS423 Plus does have going for it is this Intel Celeron CPU. It is the only lineup we're really talking about here that still has Intel Quick Sync on it. So if you are often using Plex transcoding and you've got a Plex pass, this right here is gonna punch above its weight class for Plex hardware transcoding because it has an actual GPU in there that can actually assist in the encoding and decoding of H.264 video. So that means that your actual Plex server can run much, much, much faster, even though this is a less powerful CPU. So for people who are looking for that, this is why it's still in this list. It does come in at $500, so it is not cheap, but if you're really looking for that, it's well worth the upgrade compared to the 423 because of this CPU and the upgradable RAM is a very nice plus. And you do get some additional features like the ability to add in your NVMe drives as well. So this is now where we've now broken into that $500 price point, which is now we're spending a good amount of money on our NAS, but it does also have serious capability behind it. So there is that. I actually would skip over this guy right here, the DS923 Plus. And if you're going to want more than the 423 Plus has to offer, I would really look at the 1522 Plus. 1522 Plus has built in eight gigs of RAM, which for people who are having that amount of data is really nice. Having that extra drive bay from four to five is a huge value add as well. And I just think that it is an overall longer term unit that will last much longer than the DS923 Plus and is absolutely worth the upgrade price. And so I very rarely ever recommend the 923 Plus and instead would jump right to the 1522 plus. This is once again, where we're talking about a $700 unit now. So it is not cheap, but it does have solid features to back it. And that eight gigs of Ram, I do think is a value add specifically for businesses who are going to be deploying large Synology drive instances and st things like that. If you're a hardcore home lapper, this will also benefit you. Plus it does have the ability to add in 10 gig networking after the fact, which is a very nice feature add for people who are looking to get faster and faster performance. The DS1522 Plus is probably one of my most recommended units to businesses just because it is very flexible in that sense and can hold a whole lot of data. It loaded up with 520 terabyte hard drives in a RAID 5 configuration, can store 80 terabytes of usable data, which is pretty impressive. In the same vein that I'm often skipping over the 923 Plus, I don't think I've recommended the 1621 plus to pretty much anybody in the last year and a half. Honestly, I just skip right to the DS 1821 plus because there's a hundred dollar difference there. And the two bays are completely worth it. In my opinion, if the 1522 plus does not have enough data for you or enough performance, I would really just skip right to the 1821 plus. But now we are talking about a thousand dollar unit. Eight bays, I think can justify that price pretty decently, but it is definitely on the more expensive scale. And quite frankly, the 1821 plus is the max thing I really recommend to 95% of people. It is probably my most recommended units just because you can stick four 16 terabyte hard drives in there to start today. And then just as you need more space, very easily add one more at a time, really overall lowering your total cost of ownership. Because if you run out of space, you don't have to buy a brand new unit. So for people who already have 60 terabytes of space, 50 terabytes of space, I would really recommend that 1821 plus because there is just the ability to have 108 terabytes in that unit, in the head unit, 
And then it's got two expansion units as well. So you can really just pack that thing with data. And it's just at a good price point. Everything that goes past this starts requiring Synology hard drives which makes it a lot more expensive if you want to follow their guidelines and not have a yellow flashy warning on the side. So really the 1821 plus is a great unit that I end up recommending a lot. All right, well, that's going to be it for this. I'm going to leave Amazon affiliate links down in the description below. Check out all those. And I'll also leave links to the hard drives I recommend and things like that down there as well. Go and leave any other tutorials you'd like to see me make in the comments below and have a good one. Bye.